bless you. Praise the Lord. God bless you. My name is Minister Red. I am the pastor here at Christ Tower Lake Ministries, located in Augusta, Georgia, on 308 Rose Street, directly behind the Walmart loads on Bobby Jones Expressway, Interstate 520, heading west. I want to thank you for joining me for my Sunday service, amen, along with my members, Brother Roland and his beautiful wife, Sister Brittany Peachy, Sister Selena and her beautiful husband, Stan, my brother, Minister Harvey Cole and his beautiful wife, Sister Kimberly, my brother, Harry Evans, and we want to continue to remember his wife, Sister Beverly Conyers Evans, who went on to be with the Lord on March the 4th of last year. She was a pillar of this ministry. We love her. We miss her in the name of Jesus. I want to thank you for joining my sister church, amen, Spirit of Liberty's Ministries, pastor by the phenomenal minister, Kenya King, who has a birthday today. We want to wish Pastor King a happy birthday. Thank God for him being birthed into this world. Thank God for calling him into the ministry. Thank God for his ministry. Join him and his wife every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. and every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. to be blessed by the living word of God in the name of Jesus. God bless you, Deacon Nathaniel Stevenson. I love you, my friend. Hallelujah, left the wrong jump drive at home, brought the, the old jump drive, amen. Hallelujah, because I truly believe that the devil does not want this one to go forward in the name of Jesus. It's got to be the devil not wanting this to go forward because God gave me this word today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, I am on YouTube. There are over 365 messages on my YouTube channel, you ought to join them and be blessed to hear a word from God, amen. Let him bless you spiritually as well as physically through the living word in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Today's message and the reason why the devil don't want this thing to go forward because we're talking about the anointing today. God bless you, Pastor King. I love you, my friend. Happy birthday, man. I wish I was there to, amen, celebrate with you in person, but you know I love you. You're my sister church, my brother in Christ, the only assistant pastor that Christ Our Life Ministries has ever known. I love you, my friend. Hallelujah. Today's message, the anointing, the missing link. There we go. There we go. The missing link between Christ and his believers. Hallelujah. The missing link between Christ and his believers. We're going to come out of Colossians 1 and 18 today. It reads on this wise. And he, Christ, is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. Him and now the firstborn from the dead that in all things he might have the preeminence. Y'all know what the definition of preeminence is? Exceeding greatness. That he might have the exceeding greatness in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we come boldly before your throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Lord, I want to thank you for this word. Seemed like the devil did everything to me this morning to keep me from being here to bring this word. I know it was him because of the way that you gave it to me. I love you, God. I thank you for the anointing on my life. I thank you for the anointing on the lives of everybody listening to me today. I thank you that this word would not fall on deaf ears, but that it would fall on good soil to bring forth some 30, some for 60, and some 100 fold. I pray that it be 100 fold to all who hear me today. Oh Lord, we love you. Thank you for allowing us to see another August the 6th. Thank you for Pastor King being able to see another beautiful August the 6th birthday. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah the anointing, the missing link between Christ and his believers. 
This verse says, he is the head of the body, the church. The church is the body. When it comes to the body, I have seen people missing arms, but they were still alive. I've seen people missing legs, they were still alive. God bless you, Sister Diane, I love you. I've seen people missing kidneys, missing livers, and still living. But I've never seen an individual missing his head and still alive. Christ is the head of the church, the firstborn from the dead. He is the firstborn from the dead. We are the second, the body is the second born from the dead when we come up out of water baptism, when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of our life. We are the second born from the dead because that's what the church is. The church is one. The church is one. The head came first and then the body. That in all things the head might have the exceeding greatness, exceeding greater than the body. Because today the body is, seems to be exceeding greater than the head. Because a lot of people call themselves believers, a lot of people go to church and, the, and their church is, is, is bigger than what Christ truly stands for. He is the head of the body. And it is the anointing that connects him to his believers. This verse says that in all things he may have the preeminence, the exceeding greatness. What gives Jesus exceeding greatness? What gives him this exceeding greatness in all things? What gives him this exceeding greatness in all things? The anointing. Luke 4 and 18, Jesus says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me. God bless you, Sister Darlene, I love you. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me. To preach the gospel to the poor, to proclaim liberty, to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. The anointing, oh, oh we went backwards. The Spirit of the Lord is the anointing. It is the anointing. It is the burden removing, yoke destroying power of God. What is what is a yoke? What is a yoke? It is a device laid on the neck of a defeated person. Our old man is a defeated person because of sin. The anointing is the burden removing, taken off of your neck, defeats defeat power of God. Isaiah 10 and 27 says, It shall come to pass in that day, what day was that? The day you picked up the cross. What was, what's the purpose of us picking up the cross? So that we may die. See, Christ was the firstborn from the dead. The church is the second. It shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken from off your shoulders. His, his burden. What burden was put on our shoulders? The curse. He cursed Adam. He put this burden on Adam. He cursed him. He cursed Adam. That's the burden. But then the Bible tells us, cursed is every man that hang up on the tree. See, Christ hung on the tree first to take the burden off of our shoulder. The burden of carrying the curse that Adam put on us. And his yoke from off your neck, the thing that keeps you walking with your head down, 
keeps you walking defeated. The, the, the burden that's on the neck. The thing that, 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 that keeps you poor. The thing that keeps you captive. The thing that keeps you broken hearted. The thing that keeps you blind. The thing that keeps you oppressed. In the name of Jesus. He takes it off of our neck. And the yoke will be destroyed. Because of the anointing oil. Because of the anointing or the thing that connects Christ to his believers. What is a yoke? A yoke is an arse device laid on the neck of a defeated person. Our old man. Our old man is a defeated person because of the sin in it. But it was destroyed on the cross because of the anointing. And the cross created and birthed the new man. When you, when you come off the cross, you are a new man. The cross births the new man. So if you're a new man in Christ, you should not have no burdens on your shoulders and you shouldn't have no yokes on your neck because of the anointing. Because of the anointing. The anointing destroys the yoke. Countless believers, countless believers talk about the cross. They talk about the cross, but they know absolutely nothing about it, uh, about the life that died on it. Here we go, this is where I'm going to start teaching. They know absolutely nothing about the life that died on it. What life died on the cross? God's anointed life. God's divine life. The cross destroyed God's divine life. You know, that's what I was saying when I was teaching Thursday night about the cross. And I was like, you know what though, when, when a person, when a person creates a, a rifle, a gun, they create the rifle and the gun for the purpose of killing something. But they don't create the rifle and the gun on, on the purpose of killing themselves. So when, when, so when God created the cross, he, he created the cross for the, for, the, for the purpose of killing sin and, and because man won't get on it. He, had, he made this cross so powerful that the cross, he made the cross, that this, this thing will kill me. This thing will kill the anointed life. And so through the cross, the anointed life, God raised the anointed life from the dead, and we are now in it. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. The cross births the new man. And that's where today's message is going to talk about the new man. What life died on the cross? God's anointed life that we might walk in newness of life. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, mm hmm yeah. Many get baptized and talk about Jesus, but are missing the link. They're missing the link. They're missing the link that connects every believer to him. They're missing the anointing, making it very easy for Jesus to say to them, I never knew you. It makes it real easy for Jesus to say, I never knew you. Watch this right here. How? How does it make it easy for Jesus to say, I never knew them? Because we know our body parts. You, 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 you know your hand, you know your foot, you know your chest, you know everything about you. He is the head of the body. You think, you know, you know why you know what your hand is? Because something in your head is telling you that that's your hand. Something in your head is telling you everything you need to know about you. We know our body parts. Jesus Christ knows his body parts. And he knows that his body parts should be operating under the anointing. There is absolutely nothing wrong with our head. There is nothing wrong with Christ, the head of the church, church people. There is nothing, there is absolutely nothing wrong with the head. The problem is his body parts. 
because they lack the anointed life. The body parts lack the anointed life. Now I'm trying to figure out, now you, you take a tree and you take its branches, we know that the, the, that the branch gets its life from the tree. But Christ's body parts ain't getting their life from him because if they was getting their life from him, then they will be living the anointed life because the head is anointed. What did he say? He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me. He has anointed me. Psalms 133 says, oh, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that ran down upon the skirts of his garments. For from there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. The anointing always starts from the head. But there's something wrong with the body parts. And that's why Christ is going to tell a bunch of people that claim to be his body parts, I never knew you. Because... He knows his body parts. And he knows that his body parts are anointed. There is absolutely nothing wrong with the head. The problem is his body parts because they lack the anointed life. The purpose for the anointing is to link the body parts to the anointed life. But we're not linked to, the, to this life. Many of us are still linked to the world. We're not linked to this life. We're still linked to the world. Linked to a lot of this mess right here. A lot of uh, this, uh, uh, linked to adultery, linked to a fornication, linked to LGBT, linked to masonry, Eastern Star, Omega Sapphire, Alpha Kappa Alpha, linked to the NAACP, linked to Black Lives Matter, linked to unsaved family and friends, linked to inner circles, linked to politics. We ain't linked to the anointed life of God, and that's why you still walking around defeated, still walking around with yokes all on your life. When Jesus is telling us in Matthew 11 and 29 to take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Take my, but, you, but, but we won't do that. We won't do that. You know what? We just like that, that stupid Pharisee that, that just wouldn't stop looking at himself and beat upon his breast and told God, I'm glad I'm not like that publican. I pay a tenth of all tithes and I give them my alms and I pray every day. Stuck on itself. Still lacking humility. Lacking humility. A lot of us are still linked to a lot of mess that the anointing should have destroyed. The anointing should have destroyed it living paralyzed to the anointed life but alive to sin still breaking God's law living paralyzed did you know that mm -hmm, yeah yeah I see, see y'all with me now y'all with me now because we're gonna we're gonna talk this thing from the head and the body Christ is the head and we're the body the church the church is paralyzed today I tell you one thing I got a friend in the name of Jesus, he's paralyzed. He's paralyzed from the neck down. Ain't nothing wrong with the head, but the body won't respond to his head. No matter how much he wants to try to move his arm, his arms won't move. No matter how much he want to get up out of that bed, he can't get up out of that bed. In the name of Jesus, Christ church is behaving the same way as my friend is today, living paralyzed to the anointed life, but alive to sin, breaking God's law. I'm talking about born again believers today, living paralyzed to the anointed life that they claim to have. Because when you say you're a Christian, then you're saying that you, that you have the anointed life. That's what you're saying. 
but you're paralyzed to the anointed life and you're alive to sin. And I'm going to tell you the reason why many of God's born again people are living paralyzed to the anointed life is due to church leadership. Church leadership. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I, no, I, I'm, no, I'm not going to beat y'all up. I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm talking about this church leadership. I'm talking about, the, I'm talking about the, the, the churches that let y'all get away with that mess. What is God's law? Here we go. Let's teach it. What is God's law? God's law is Christ, the divine life. That is the only law God had. Because the Bible says, the Bible says in Timothy that, uh, that the law was not, uh, given, was not written for a righteous man. So if the law ain't written for a righteous man, why? Because righteousness is living in one accord with God's divine life. So Christ is God's divine life. So when you live in, so when you live in one accord with, with Christ, then that means you're living in one accord with God's law because it is God's law that we live in one accord with his divine life. What is the law of Moses? What is the law of Moses? It is the yoke put on the life of the old man. It is the life put on the yoke of the old God put the law on the old man. See, because God says you can't keep this law. You are too defeated to keep this law. Romans 8 and 3. For what the law could not do in that it was weak in the flesh even though God put this yoke on man's neck. It was still weak in the flesh so God sent in his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Put it in the earth suit, nailed the earth suit to the cross. New man birthed through the cross. No longer to live under any Mosaic commandments. But the church is still teaching that. That's why I'm trying to tell you. The link that's stopping born again believers from living an anointed life is the teaching of the Old Testament. I'm going to show you that today. The law of Moses is the yoke put on the life of the old man. Do not let anyone put your anointed life under a yoke or under sin. Don't let them do that to you. Don't let them do that to you. No Christian is under the law of Moses. Ephesians 2 and 5, 15 says, Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. Through the cross, the cross links us to the spiritual world. The cross links us to the life of the second eternity. If you don't allow the cross to do its work in your life, you will live with burdens, you will live yoked up, and you will live a defeated life as a born again believer. You will spend more time repenting to God than you will with fellowshipping with God in one accord. Because you keep thinking that keeping the law of commandments contained in ordinances is all you need. And that is not true because the man that had to deal with the law of commandments contained in ordinances, Christ put him to death on the cross. No Christian is under the law of Moses. Why? Because of the anointed life of Jesus. Jesus says, I didn't come to destroy the law. I come to fulfill it. I am the exceeding greatness. I am the preeminence of what you're looking for in life. There is no life greater than me. There is no law stronger than me. I am it. I am the divine life of God. And you are my body. And I am your head. 
When you do not obey what I say, you are violating Ephesians 4 and 30. Ephesians 4 and 30 says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God in whom ye are sealed for the day of redemption. You have been resealed, you have been sealed for the day of redemption by the anointing of God. And yet you continue to allow people to keep you under the law of Moses. You keep allowing people to tell you how to live your life. I never, make sure you get this right about Pastor Rick. I need to make sure you understand this about me. I never tell you how to live your life. I tell you the Christ life. If you ever think I'm telling you how to live your life, then you're, then the devil's got you blinded. Because I don't know how to tell you how to live the Christ life. I can only tell you about the Christ life. I can tell you about it. It's up to you to get a relationship with him. It's up to you to get the link. It's up to you to, to, to get the link. Link a relationship between two things where one affects the other. The anointing should have affected you by now to where you should have stopped doing some of the mess that you be doing. It is my job as a pastor to link you up with the Christ life through the preaching of the gospel. And if you don't like my preaching, then I, then I, can't, I can't help you then. But I tell you what, you'll never say I told you you couldn't do something. I never tell y'all y'all can't do nothing. I tell you the Christ life and what the Christ life doesn't do. The Christ life does not get inside of another female and marry another female. The Christ life does not get inside of another male and marry another male. The Christ life does not get inside of a human and go join organizations. The, 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 the Christ life doesn't get in a married person and then cause them to go commit adultery. No, that is grieving the Holy Spirit when you do that. You're grieving the anointing. You're grieving the anointing because you have went to the cross and you're a new creature in Christ and the anointing is trying to figure out how you ain't defeating the lust of your flesh when the anointing put it to sleep. I want to know what dead person do you know that has died, that has came to visit you since you died? What dead person do you know have came to visit you since they've died? Because, you know, I got a sister that, that died when I was 16 years old. I'm, I'll be 58 years old next month. I ain't seen her. She, she ain't came to visit me. So you got to look at yourself like that. You got to say, if you gave, I gave my life to the Lord in 1993. That means I went to the cross in 1993. I should not be having a relationship with that guy anymore. Me and that guy shouldn't have no more relations. He should, he should be dead. I should be walking in newness of life. You better get out of my face talking the Mosaic law to me. You better get out of my face. I'm born again. Walking in newness of life. And y'all better y'all better start using my vocabulary for your life. If you don't want to be burdened down and yoked with being oppressed in this world. Second Corinthians 3 and 14 says, but their minds, but their minds were blinded. See, see, but, but, he, but he said the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to, for recovery of sight to the blind. But their minds were blinded for unto this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in reading of the Old Testament which veil is done away in Christ. Why is the veil done away in Christ? Because of the cross. 
because when you're in Christ, you're in the new man that was birthed on the cross. And you don't have to do nothing. You, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure I stand right in the camera and say this. I'm not going to say it loud. I'm going to say it real softly. You don't have to do nothing that the law says if you are living in the new man. The new man is the anointing of God that gave the law to the old man because the old man didn't live it. The new man does not live under law. He lives under grace. Second Corinthians 4 and 4 says, In whom the God of this world, look who's doing the blinding, has blinded the minds of them which believe not. So when I say that, I say, them pastors that still teach in Old Testament, the God of this world has blinded them. Oh, fight the Bible verses. Don't fight me. Fight the Bible verses. You know what? You know what? You know, born again believers. Y'all want to be. Y'all want to be so free, but y'all so stupid that y'all let people put y'all under ordinances that the new man shouldn't be under. Man, you better get out of my face talking mosaic law to me. You better get out of my face. I was. Talk to, and you know what I'm going to tell you? No, I ain't going to get ahead of my slides because I'm going to get there and I'll talk it later. And on the God of this world has blinded the minds of them. See, it's all about mind blinding. It's all about mind blinding because the mind resonates from the head. So if he can, if the, if the, if the God of this world and if them stupid pastors that don't have the anointing on their life that they're supposed to have, Keep putting y'all under the Mosaic law. Then they're blinding you to the head. And when they blind you to the head, it grieves the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. And, and why? Why y'all ain't getting mad when you can feel this grieving of the Holy Spirit? I don't know. I don't know, but you know, you better get out of my face talking the law of Moses to me. That don't that don't apply here. That do not apply to Pastor Red. Not at all. I'm living in the new, I'm living the new man. The new man of righteousness and holiness in Christ Jesus. The God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ. See, that's what the problem with Pastor Ray. The light of the, of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, has shined unto me. See, the, see the, the, the law couldn't shine unto the people. They was too afraid, so they made Moses put the veil over his face because they couldn't handle the light. My old man couldn't handle the light. My old man can't handle the light. So I said, bump this, I'm going to the cross. I need to get in the new man so I can handle this light. The anointed life is upon me, Pastor Brett. The anointed life is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me here to Augusta, Georgia to heal the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives, them that's captured under the law, that's still captured under sin, because the law was the strength of sin, and recovery of sight to the blind. I help you to see your way out of living under the Mosaic law. I will, through the anointing of Christ on my life, teach you how to recover from being blinded by preachers and ministries. God finally, finally unblinded Creflo Dollar. Finally did it. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. 
Here it is right there, Malachi 3 and 5. This is the verse they don't read in church. They'll read through y'all Malachi 3 and 6, but they won't read through y'all Malachi 3 and 5. Malachi 3 and 5 says, he's, the Lord says, I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers and against false swearers and against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from his right and fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts. I will be a swift witness against those that oppress the hireling in his wages. What is a hireling? What is a hireling? It is a laborer for a wage. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Nowhere in that verse did it mention the word labor when it comes to the gift of God. It is a free gift. The cross is a free gift. It is a free gift. If you want to live in the second eternity with God and his son, you got, to, you got to receive the free gift. You got to receive the free gift. It is a free gift. It is a free gift that comes with the anointing. It is a free gift that comes with the anointing. I'm not going to play church with nobody. I'm not here to play church with y'all. You can die in your sins. You can die in your sins. But when you die in your sins, you ain't going to say that you didn't hear an anointed man of God tell you the living word of God. You're never going to say, I didn't do that. What's a hireling in his wages? He is a righteous man living the anointed life. Malachi 3 and 3. He will sit this is what the Lord will. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He will purify the Levites. N -n -n -n. See, this is what he got to be. He got to purify the priest. And that's what's wrong in the church today. The priest ain't purified. The pastors, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and the saints, they ain't purified. If they still teach in the Old Testament, they ain't been purified. No, no. Man, the Mount of Transfiguration, don't act like y'all don't know. The Mount of Transfiguration, don't act like y'all don't know that. Peter said, Lord, let us build three tabernacles. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And then a cloud covered them. And then a voice spoke from the cloud and said, this is my beloved son. Hear ye him. This is the only one that's anointed. He has the anointed life. Hear ye him, and he will sit as a purifier and purify silver. He will purify the Levites and refine them like gold and silver. No, he didn't say. So when you say, when that word say Levites, that means he ain't messing with the other eleven tribes because the other eleven tribes didn't carry the law of commandments written in ordinances. The Levites did. And so God is sitting up here in heaven looking down at the stupid fivefold ministry, wondering why he has to purify the fivefold ministry. And then you got stupid church people that look at ministers like me that have been purified, wondering why. They shouldn't pay tithes, and because they've been, because the yoke of sin is still on their neck, that they need the law to get it off of them, and the law is what puts it on them. Then the Lord will have men. Here we go. Here we go. This is me. Then the Lord will have men who will bring offerings in righteousness, offering in living in one accord with God's. Divine life. 
God wants us to live in one accord with his divine life. And it ain't enough, it ain't nothing you can do to, to do that other than get on the cross. Nothing you can do. Nothing Pastor Greg can do but get on the cross and become a new man and walk under the anointing of that life. Acts 18.22 Watch this Deacon Stevenson. Simon, who Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given. Hallelujah. He offered them money in the name of Jesus, saying, Give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. You can't purchase the anointed life with 10% of your income. You can't purchase the, the gift of God through your love of your pastor. You can't give, uh, you can't purchase the gift of God uh, through none of your works. It must be done uh, through the cross and through the anointed life of Christ. Other than that, uh, you are refusing to accept God's gift to mankind. And because you refuse to accept his gift, he's going to tell you, I never knew you. I never knew you. You never lived in one accord with me. You never lived in one accord with me. You, you kept living with Moses. You kept living with Moses. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. But I told Moses, because you didn't live in one accord with my divine word, when I told you to speak to the rock, but rather you struck the rock, you will not enter into the promised land in the name of Jesus. He was just talking that to Moses because Moses was still in the carnal realm and God was speaking to him about the carnal realm in the name of Jesus. But the Bible says Moses was faithful in all his house. He did everything according to the pattern shown him on the mount in the name of Jesus. Somebody gonna hear me today. Somebody gonna start living under the anointing of Jesus Christ uh, other than myself in the name of Jesus. It is not time for you to be questioning whether you should be doing this or whether you should be doing that. The anointing will lead you uh, in the way that you should go. The anointing uh, will carry you uh, through fiery furnaces. The anointing uh, will deliver you uh, out of the lion's den. All you got to do is follow the pattern laid out for you by the anointing. That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. Y'all, I'm going to tell you, y'all keep on thinking they're anointed. You keep on, you're going to keep on thinking they're anointed, and then they're going to keep on taking your money. In the name of Jesus. That's why I don't go to churches no more. In the name of Jesus, I don't really go. I say right here, Christ, I like ministries, and I fellowship with Pastor King and Pastor Walker. I ain't not there. No, I don't dibble and dabble. Because, mm -mm, you know, the last time, the last church I went to, I went to this church. And so, you know, I went up and I sat. I sat up in the pool. They said, well, that's a minister. I sat up in the pulpit with them in the name of Jesus. They had this visiting pastor. He spoke. So they did their offering. Did their tithes and offering. Got their tithes and offering. That grieved my Holy Spirit sitting up in there with that. Then... After the visiting pastor got finished speaking, uh, the dumb pastor got the audacity to get up in the name of Jesus and tell the people, that was y'all blessed today? Let's bless the visiting pastor. Let us take up an offering for him. Let's get a visiting pastor offering. So I'm sitting up in the pulpit and be like, man, I'm not giving you no more money. I'm not giving you no more money. You know what the Bible says right here? Look, I got it on the board. I got it on the board right there, right there. The, the, the Lord loves a cheerful giver, right there. God loves a cheerful giver. God was like, I was like God, uh, I'm not cheerfully giving this time. See, if you, ain't gonna, if you ain't gonna cheerfully give, you better not give. See, I'm not cheerfully giving. I'm not cheerfully giving because we shouldn't be preaching to give people money. We shouldn't be doing that. 
My God, if somebody invites me to come to preach, hallelujah, it, that, that's when, then. I won't do it now. But then if somebody would have offered me to come and preach, I'd have came and preached. But I'd have said, don't take up no love offering for me. In the name of Jesus. That's why I told Sister Selena and I told the peaches, you better not do no doggone pastoral appreciation service for me. I don't want no pastoral appreciation service. I don't want you to do nothing for me. All I want you to do is walk in the counsel of the God that talks to me, that talks to, through me to you. That's all I want you to do. If you're living a righteous life, if you're living in one accord with God's divine life, then that is a pastoral appreciation to me. That I appreciate the fact that you're living the word of God. I appreciate the fact that you trust in me to give you the word of God, knowing that you're going to die, knowing that your eternity is, 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 is based on walking in my counsel. That is appreciation enough for me. Appreciation enough. Hallelujah. Give me also this power that I may lay hands on. See, that's what I'm trying to say. They say, you don't pay, you don't pay your 10%, you're going to be cursed. Man, how you, you, how you going? The Bible says curse is every man that hang on the tree. Not every man that don't pay 10%. Hallelujah. The anointing is the missing link. In the name of Jesus, I ain't done yet. Hallelujah, the name of Jesus. I want to talk a little bit more. Hallelujah. Jesus, amen, in Matthew chapter 8, amen. Them people came and they was hiding. He hired them for the day. Everybody went in and worked in the field. When everybody came out, he gave them a penny. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. How are you going to pay 10% with a penny? How are you going to do it? Hallelujah. But the churches today, they oppress the born again believers in their wages. I'm going to tell you until God take the breath of life out of my nostrils, I'm going to preach against tithing until I die. Because the church today has got believers thinking that if they don't pay 10%, that they curse. And that is not of God. That is not of God. If that was the case, I wouldn't be bill free. I wouldn't have all the money that I got. I wouldn't be 100% totally healthy in my body. I wouldn't have a fabulous, outstanding marriage. I wouldn't have an outstanding, phenomenal job. I wouldn't have some of the greatest supporters of this ministry who sows financially into my ministry without me asking for it. I'm, according to them, I'm supposed to be cursed. According to them, I'm supposed to be cursed. I can tell you, Sister Selena don't tithe here. She ain't cursed. The peaches ain't tithed here. Don't tithe here. They ain't cursed. The coals don't tithe here. They ain't cursed. Deacon Stevenson don't tithe here. He ain't cursed. Pastor King don't tithe here. They ain't cursed. Why is this? This can only be. This can only up only happens in their churches where they, where they keep their members blinded. They keep their members blinded. I'm not going to blind you. I don't want your money. I want you to, I want you to walk in the anointing. I need you to, I need you to, because if you, because if you walk in the anointing and I walk in the anointing, then that means we're walking in one accord together. And that means that, that, that we all going to meet up with Christ and he's going to take us into the second eternity with him. And, and I'm going to tell you something, these people that, that say they're called of God, that say they're called of God, you're going you're gonna to see in that day that they were not. 
You're going to see in that day that they were not. Yeah. Everybody thought Eddie Long was called of God until them five boys came out. If you called him, I'm going to say this. You better hear me. If you are called of God and you say that you are a pastor, you better have a flawless testimony in your living. Because people are submitting themselves to you because they feel and they believe that you are anointed and that God told them to join your ministry. And the sad thing about it is these people join these ministries and the pastors teach more tithes and offerings than anybody. And then, then they want to say they ain't, the church ain't got no money. Then you got stupid Christmas and mess come up. So then they, they want to take up these big offerings so they can have money so that they can buy the, 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 the people in the church, by they, helping them buy their kids uh, Christmas presents. Well, the, the, the person with the amount of money that, that you then took from them from January to November in tithing, they would have probably had enough money to buy their kids Christmas presents if you would have left their money alone. And then the ones that, that don't tithe, then you buy their kids Christmas presents because they stupid mama running around with fingernails longer than I-95, spending all the money on stupid fingernails and, and wigs and, and dresses and everything else. And y'all steadily giving them y'all's money. And then y'all going y'all stupid tails home, eating bologna sandwiches and cold cut sandwiches in the past and his wife with that ugly fruit basket hat sitting on top of her head going out and eating at Applebee's and in the Outback Steakhouse and everything else. They eating good and y'all eating like, like project people. I'm a, you can get off my Facebook page. But when you, but, but in the, in the only reason why you don't know this is because you don't, you don't look. But I tell you what, I've, I've seen them. I, 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 you think, I wasn't, a, I wasn't always a pastor. I was a brother, I was a deacon, and I was a minister. In my brother days, in my deacon days, in my minister days, I saw what pastors did. I see what pastors do today. You think I'm lying to you? I tell you, when, when, when church service is over today, some pastor and his, and his, and his family and them other stupid ministers that, and, and people in the church that agree with their teaching, they all going to go out and eat together because they got their stupid little cliques. They're going to all go out and eat together, and, and y'all going to go home poor. Opening up the refrigerator to a bare refrigerator and the pastor and his wife and their kids and everybody else in the church living off of your money. You better start walking in the anointing. You better start letting the anointing, the anointing lead your life. You better start letting the anointing take over your life and, and take off the veil that ministries have put on your eyes. You're not, I'm not taking no money from my members. The anointing don't need money. The anointing don't need, the anointing needs obedience. Oh yes, Sister Diane, you sure are blessed. You are highly blessed because you ain't linked up to some stupid church that takes your money. And I say that, I, I, I always say, you know, how many, you know how many churches is having services today? You know how many, feel free to join them. You ain't gotta come on my Facebook post. You can join anybody you wanna join. But if you come here, if one thing you gonna know about coming here, 
I'm going to preach liberty to you. The Christ life gives you so much liberty. So much liberty. The only thing that messes up that liberty is the God of this world. When you start listening to everybody other than the anointing. You have to you have to listen to the anointing. You have to submit to the anointing. You have to obey the anointing. We have to. The Bible says in Psalms 105 and 15, it says, Touch not mine anointed and do his prophets no harm. Touch not my anointed. What is it? It's the life. Pastor, it is not Pastor Red. It is not Pastor Red. But it is the life that Pastor Red lives in. You see, there you go. Right? God bless you, Sister Selene. I love you. It is not pa Pastor Red. Don't stop. We got, to, we got to stop saying that men and women are anointed. No. It is the life that's anointed. And then... After we get the anointed life, we get to claim our office. See, once I receive the anointed life, I receive the office of pastor teacher. That's why he says, touch not my anointed, nor do my prophets. I'm not a prophet. Never claim to be. I'm a pastor teacher. I claim that office because of the anointed life in the anointing on my life to teach the living word of God. I can grieve the Holy Spirit by not listening to what he says to me. I can do that. I know I do that sometimes. But when I do it, and you better hear me, but when I do do it, I never do it because I live by the Old Testament. I do it because there's this sin in all of us that sometimes this, this, thing, this thing moves sometimes. It moves sometime. But the anointing breaks that thing. It breaks it. And so I have to let the anointing break. Because, you know, it's, it's, some, it's some stuff still about me that I still got to learn about me. And the, holy, and the anointing shows me the me that still needs to be that the burdens still need to be removed and the yokes still need to be destroyed in the life of Pastor Red. And I ain't got the time to be looking back in the discussing what he's done brought me past. What he's done brought me past when I was a brother in the church, a deacon in the church, a minister in the church. I ain't got the time to be revisiting that. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Forgetting those things that are behind. It's time for you to forget everything that you know about money when it comes to the church. The only thing you need to know about money when it comes to the church is 2 Corinthians 9 and 7. That God loves a cheerful giver. That's all you need to know about money. And nor does he tell you how much to give. Nor does he tell you where to give it. Nor does he tell you how to give it. He just says he loves a cheerful giver. And if you want to say that's how you give it, then that is how you give it. You give it cheerfully. 
That is how you give it. You give it cheerfully. The anointing, the missing link between Christ and his believers. We ain't through. We, we through with this part, but I got a part too. You better believe it. God got a part too because we're going to make sure that, that, that God wants to make sure that you understand the anointing so when you walk around and you wonder why doors ain't opening for you why you wonder why things ain't happening in your favor he going he gonna to teach you Thursday night is because you spend too much time grieving him you spend too much time grieving him instead of living in one accord with him. We're going to talk this Thursday night. Thank you for joining me today. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this word. Thank you for all that joined to hear your word today. Lord, I thank you for Creflo Dollar who taught tithes and offerings for over 20 years. I know that because he was one of the first ones that I started listening to and I've been in the ministry now for over 20 years and before that 10 years I was a brother and a deacon and a minister up to 10 years then for the last 20 years I've been a pastor and you finally brought Creflo Dollar to see that he'd been teaching incorrectly on tithing. The anointing, the anointed life that he lives finally broke the yoke. Finally broke, destroyed the yoke. God, I pray that today's message destroys the yoke in the lives of the hearers today. You have given us so much liberty with our finances that men who claim to be anointed are telling us how we should spend them. God, do not let another child of yours be blinded by that doctrine, by their teaching. We love you and we thank you. We thank you for part two that's going to come Thursday night concerning the anointing so that we'll know how we have been grieving you and how we should stop grieving you as we live connected to your divine life of Christ. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining me. Join me Tuesday night with Pastor King. Me and Pastor King will be together Tuesday night. Uh, Spirit of Liberty Ministries here Facebook Live. Then I'll be back before you with part two of the anointing, the missing link between Christ and his believers. God bless you. I love you. Amen and amen.